Hi, my name is Andrea and I work at the Ann Arbor Hands On Museum and Leslie Science and Nature Center. Today I want to talk about something called the Stroop Effect. The Stroop Effect is named for John Ridley Stroop, who was a scientist in the early and mid 1900s. It demonstrates something called cognitive interference. This is where your brain has to process two pieces of information that don't match up. Let's take a look at an example Stroop test to see how it works. The Stroop test is delivered in three parts. Here's part number one. I have a picture of several diamonds of different colors. For the first part of the test, my job is to name the colors of each diamond as fast as I can. I'm going to use a stopwatch to see how fast I can do it and record my data. If you want to do this with me, pause your video and you can try it too. Okay, ready? Go. Orange, red, blue, green, orange, green, red, purple, blue, blue, red, purple. Okay, that took about five and a half seconds to do. How long did it take you? Write down your data so you remember, and we're on to part two. Now I have a list of colors written in different colored ink. You'll notice that the color of ink matches the name of the word. For this part of the test, your job is to say the name of the color ink each word is written in. So for example, for the word red, I would say red. Record how long it takes you to do on your stopwatch, and then write down your data so you can remember the number. If you want to do this with me, pause your video and try it for yourself. Okay, ready, go. Red, green, purple, blue, orange, red, green, blue, orange, purple, red, green. All right, that took 5.68 seconds to do. How long did it take you? Record your time on a piece of paper so that you remember what it is. We're on to part three. My final list of colors are also written in different colored ink, except this time you'll notice that the color of the ink does not match the name of the word. So for example, the word blue is written in green colored ink. For this last part of the Stroop test, you have to name the color of ink each word is written in as fast as you can. Again, record your time on a stopwatch and then write it down so that you remember and can compare it to your other trials. If you want to do this with me, pause your video and try it for yourself. Okay, ready, go. Green, purple, blue, orange, red, purple, green, purple, orange, red, blue, blue. Okay, this time it took 11.27 seconds. That's almost double the amount of time that it took during the other parts of our test. Can you make a hypothesis as to why it took so much longer during part three of the test versus the other two parts of the test? Did it take you longer to say the names of the colors during part three of our test? You have just seen the Stroop effect in action. Let's investigate how it works. During the first part of the test, we have what's called neutral stimuli. That means the two pieces of information coming into your brain, the color of the diamond and the shape of the diamond, have nothing to do with each other. And your brain just basically has to name the color of each diamond, and it can do that pretty quickly. During the second part of the test, we have what's called congruent stimuli. This is where the two pieces of information coming into your brain, the color of the ink and the name of the word match each other. These two pieces of information help each other and your brain to process them quickly. Part three of our test is where things get interesting. This part shows incongruent stimuli. That means that the two pieces of information coming into your brain, the color of the ink and the name of the word, do not match. And in fact, they conflict with each other. This makes it harder for your brain to process because you have to remember the rules of the test before you answer your question. You can see this effect in my data too because part three of the test took twice as long as parts one and part two. This delay in processing is called cognitive interference. There are a few theories that scientists use to explain the Stroop effect. One of the most common theories is called automaticity. This theory suggests that reading the name of a word is an automatic process for your brain. It becomes automatic because we spend a lot of time learning how to read and we practice it all the time too. But naming the color is not an automatic process. So in part three of the test, when you're asked to name the color of the ink rather than read the word, it becomes a little tricky for your brain because you automatically default to just reading the words. And instead you have to focus on the color. 
Another theory to explain the Stroop effect is called selective attention. This theory suggests that naming the color of something takes more attention than reading a word, so it takes your brain a little longer to do. I think it would be interesting to try this test on a young child who doesn't know how to read yet, but does know their colors. What do you think would happen? My hypothesis is that the young child would do equally as well on parts three of the test as parts two and parts one because reading the words isn't interfering with naming the colors if they don't know how to read yet. If you have a younger sibling who doesn't know how to read yet but knows their colors, you could test out the Stroop effect on them and see what happens. Another interesting experiment is to try the Stroop test with words written in another language. If I can't understand the language, will it affect my time on part three of the test? For example, I only speak English, but I made a part three of this test using Mandarin characters. Now, unfortunately, I can't read what they say because I don't speak Chinese, but I wonder if I were to take part three of the test again using these words, if my time would be different than when I took parts two and parts one before. Make a hypothesis about what you think will happen and then we'll try it together. Okay, ready, go. Purple, green, orange, blue, red, blue, red, orange, green, green, purple, red. Okay, this time it took 5.46 seconds, which is pretty close to the time it took me to do part one of the test earlier when the two pieces of information didn't relate to each other. In this trial, there's no cognitive interference because I can't read the words. So I don't have that automatic process in my brain. If you're bilingual, you can try the Stroop test in both of the languages that you speak and see if there's a Stroop effect in each one. Thanks for being great neuroscientists today and helping me study the brain. Stay curious, scientists.